Hi guys, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. My name is Ashmere and I am a beauty junkie enthusiast. I have been in the beauty industry for most of my career until recently. So I now get to play in makeup from a purely consumer side and it is honestly probably the most excited I've been about beauty and makeup um, in a very long time. So welcome to my channel. We talk all things makeup, skincare, hair care, mostly makeup because that's kind of what encompasses most of my obsession, but all things beauty, um, I'm here for it. So today I had promised to do a full face of e.l.f. I had shopped it into my stash last time. So we are going to play with some e.l.f. products. Um, I tried very deliberately to choose some things out of my collection that are not necessarily super mainstream or incredibly hyped up. I wanted to try some of their products that people kind of overlook or maybe they just haven't made a TikTok about it yet so it hasn't become TikTok famous. So that's where we are. I'm going to start with primer. By the way, it is Saturday and the weather is delicious here in Texas. It's like started out fall and now it's like a late summer feel. Like it's just cool enough to be comfortable and warm enough that you don't need to be wrapped up in a sweater or blanket and I'm obsessed. So I just wanted to throw that in there. It's a good day. It's a good day. So I'm going to start with the e.l.f. This is the Soothing Face Primer. This is one of their classic um, silicone primers. They, they make, they have all these pump primers that they had for years and years. I think this is a small size. I think it retails, I don't know, like six bucks maybe. Um, I know the big mama is like 10 bucks and it's a lot of product for not a lot of money, which is cool. Um, but they don't get a lot of love because it's not part of like their putty collection or part of the primer grip. And these are actually, I find pretty nice primers for, you know, on a budget. They're nice primers on a budget. Oh, it's pilling, but I think that's more to do with my sunscreen underneath than this primer, because I have used it before and it doesn't pill usually. But I have a different moisturizer on right now. It didn't pill a lot, so that's good. So it feels nice on the skin. Nothing crazy, nothing too excited. It has really no smell to it. It's a good primer. So if you see these, they have a ton of them. Um, I know I have another one that's like the glow one that has like this gold finish to it that's actually really pretty. Um, but they have one like for acne. They have one um, just a regular poreless one. They're good. They're good. So I definitely recommend it. So that's my primer. And then I'm going to go in with my flawless finish foundation. I'm using the shade Almond. I love this foundation. First of all, I love the nod of the packaging to NARS because that NARS glass packaging with a black top is just so chic and classic. So I love that they did a nod to that because obviously I'm guessing I didn't, um, if, in case you didn't know, if you haven't seen my videos before, I did used to work for e.l.f. I don't anymore. I didn't work for them very long. I worked for them about two years. Um, so I wasn't around in the inception. It was a very recent. I wasn't around in the inception of e.l.f. Um, so I, I don't know the origins of all products or anything like that. But my, um, I've always thought, even before I worked for e.l.f., that this was supposed to be um, obviously a dupe for NARS. Um, the, I can't remember the name. But you know which one I'm talking about. In my opinion, are they the same? No, uh, but I'll take a nod to it any day. What I love about this foundation is for $6. Guys, $6. This is a great formula. I don't think it gets hyped enough. I think e.l.f. is trying to do too much in the foundation world, to be quite honest. I think they needed to stop and perfect 
this is an amazing formulation it's a budget like it's such a great value um and they don't do enough with it i feel like the colors are a little iffy on some of them so like in my opinion if you were to ask me i would put money into perfecting the colors relaunching this puppy um maybe throw an spf in it and then you'd have an, a winning like a truly winning formulation because this this is one of my favorite foundations hands down and it, and it always has been so flawless finish foundation if you've never tried it highly recommend run out and grab it they have a ton of colors and it's just such an amazing formula i don't think they do none of their other foundations i will say i think have are up to snuff with this one and they just keep trying to launch new ones and i'm like stop it just stop just stop i'm trying to also in an effort because i'm doing elf i thought let me try to use only elf brushes or tools so the my sponge that i applied with is um was actually the sponge from their chipotle collection a couple years ago i loved i didn't the collection was really cool but the sponges were actually the knockout hit for me i loved those sponges and i still have um this one and it's the avocado shape that had the little avocado mini in it the pit and i use them all the time so i'm gonna go into browse with my a bite size brow quad this is another product from them that I feel like a it doesn't get a lot of love I can kind of see why um, it's not my favorite but for a brow quad for this is I think three bucks or four bucks this is totally worth the money if you are needing a decent brow powder on a budget and i will say this actually the quality of it compares remarkably well to the browsings i think that's the one from benefit browsings is their little compact i usually have it right here and i can't find it right now but it's the compact that when you open it up the powder is in the shape of a brow and it's in two shades they're just powder so this one has two powders and two gels um i think they were trying too hard with this honestly like i don't get a lot of use out of the gels um, I do use both of the powders. So I started with the darkest one, and that's kind of what I lined with and what I filled in this part of my brow with. But now I'm going in with this lighter one, and I'm kind of filling in the tail and the rest of my brow. And it does, I mean, it's a nice job. And this is the e.l.f. It's brow, it's um, brush number 203. It's a double-ended but this is like that really pretty luxe collection of brushes that they have. They're all clear and glass looking and I just I just think they're beautiful. It turns out they're actually really great brushes. But I honestly feel like these bite-sized brows would have been more successful if they just hadn't tried to do too much. Like why throw in the gels and the powders? Especially, and here's what I'm, hear me out here. ELF makes one of the best brow gels, like budget brow gels on the market, right? It's like three bucks, their clear brow gel. It is, it, it's a knockout, it's a knockout product. Everybody loves it for three bucks. You're not going to find a better brow gel. It does, it does the job. Why then? like create a brow product that kind of like undermines one of your best sellers instead of having them work together you could have gotten me to buy you could have done this as a duo just the two brow shades for three bucks and i still would have paid three dollars for my clear brow gel you could have gotten two products from me easy easy because that clear brow gel is already tried and true 
And I'm not so sure the industry loves applying their gels from a pan like this. Um, I will say I tried them earlier this week, tried to use the dark um, brow gel as a pomade and it did not work well. I will set them with it today though. Let me, let me show you what that does. So, all right. Verdict on bite size brows. They're okay. For three or four bucks, whatever these are, it's a, it's a lot of product for not a lot of money. Um, and if you like powders, definitely recommend it. Other than that, I think their pencils are great. I had shopped in this one, the e.l.f. Um, Ultra Precise Brow Pencil. And I already tried it a couple of times this week. It's not the right color for me. It makes my brows look too red. And then it makes my skin just look like it's irritated. It's, it's, it's a strange effect. So that's why I only did this. And I'm using the, this is the Dark Brown Quad. They make, I want to say, four or six shades in this. They make a lot of shades, um, which is nice. Good option. Just not my favorite product. Um, so for eyeshadows, I had snagged all of these, and I'm very excited for them. So I've already, spoiler alert, already started playing with these. So these are the No Budge Eyeshadow Creams. And these are the five colors I chose because I thought they were complimentary and I could create a really pretty eye with it. And I have been doing that. I'm going to start today with this is my base. This is a really pretty brown. It's called Sand Dune. I think this is the one shade. Yeah, I haven't even touched it yet. So I found a couple of things with these. First is they work way better with your finger. Trying to manipulate these with a brush is tough. You need you need like the pad of your finger to create that warmth between your finger and your lid to really get these to move and blend nicely. When you only use a brush, they tend to dry really fast. There's no warmth there. So they just kind of dry matte down and then you're left with kind of a mess that you have to try to manipulate. So pad of your finger works really well for these. The bummer about that is then when you're layering them one on top of the other, if you layer with your finger, you have a tendency to move the one that's underneath if you start working on it too soon. So I am going to lay this one down as my base. That's pretty. It's a cool brown. Not a color I typically opt for, but it's a really pretty, you know what, this would make a really nice eyeshadow base, honestly, like for powder eyeshadows. I did use these this week already as an eyeshadow base and they work really well. So just throwing that out there. So I am going to go in with this dark brown. It's called Plateau. I am going to try to layer this on with a brush because I want to keep it just in my crease and I need to be a little more um, precise than my fingertip. And I'm going to go in with this e.l.f. contour brush. I went to go tap it like it's, like it's powder. So one thing I will say about these is a little goes a long way. And once it's on, like it is on. So my recommendation with these cream shadows is start with a tiny little bit of product on your brush. Don't overdo it because you will regret it quickly. If you mess up in any way, shape, or form, these things are powerful. Which is it's, oh, like I just did right now. But that wasn't because I had too much product. It's just because I'm multitasking. It's okay. I'm going to fix it, I think. I'm going to use my e.l.f. This is from the J, J Kissa collection. It's one of my favorite blending brushes. I think they make this in like regular handle too. I just love these foil 
handles. I'm such a sucker for um, brush collections like with different colored handles. I'll buy the same brush 17 times if you give me a new handle. A new handle. This is brush number J3. I don't know what that translates to. Okay, that blended nicely. That's not too bad. This definitely needs a little bit of punch. I'm going to punch it up with this orange. I'm obsessed with this orange. So this is the color Golden Rays. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my other J Kissa J4, which I know, I think I want to say these two are like basically the same brushes. So it's like the, it's the contour brush from e.l.f. just with a different colored handle. And I'm going to dip just a little bit in there. I want to warm it up ever so slightly. And I'm going to tap that right into the center of my eye. Oh. So I use these cream brush, cream shadows earlier this week. I picked up this orange one and I was on my way to work. And I just wanted something quick and easy. And I just used the orange one all over my lid with my finger. And threw on some eyeliner and mascara and that was like amazing. It just looked so pretty. And I was afraid that it wouldn't look good because it's matte. So when it matte, it dries down. I'm used to doing that with like a shimmer. Do an all over color with a shimmer. And then the light catches it and it looks pretty. I was hesitant about it being a matte, but it actually worked out really nicely. It just looked so pretty all day long and it more importantly it did not move so these are great formulations they take a little bit it is a little tiny learning curve getting to understand them just learning how fast they set but as long as you keep them warm you can play with them and really manipulate them well I'm gonna go into the corner with this Another color that's like straight out of my diary, this mustard, it's called, I can't even read it, Sahara. Like just call it mustard. I'll buy it. It's amazing. And I'm going to go in my inner corner. I guess I'll use that same brush that I was using with the, br with the orange. I'll just kind of take the orange off. I'm just very pleased. When I thought about this, I've never actually layered creams before. I usually have a cream, like if I work with a cream element for my shadows, like I usually lay that down and then I switch to powders on top. I never ever thought about layering creams before until I came across all of these shades that I'm like, this just looks like a palette waiting to happen. Like I wish that they had this in it, even if they panned these and gave me a cream eyeshadow palette. I would be happy with it all in one instead of all these individual little pots. Although the individual little pots do help you keep them um, from drying out much easier because you can tighten those lids. Okay, so I'm loving, I'm loving how this looks. So there's something about this that I am obsessed with. I think it comes across a little better in life than in on camera. I feel like on camera it kind of washes it all out a little bit. Um, but they're just so pretty subtle gradients from one color to the next. And the, the fact that there's no shimmer is really weird that I love it. But I love it. So I'm going to go in with my e.l.f. This is H2O Proof Liquid Liner. I mean, I can't tell you how many of these I've gone through. This is a good liner. I want to say, I think it's $6. It's kind of like my back pocket. I always have one stashed handy. It's not my absolute favorite liquid liner. I have others that I like to use or I like the feel of in my hand or something. But for six bucks, I always know it'll work. I like that it's waterproof. Like, it's just a no-brainer. 
pretty eyeliner. Um, I will say the thing that bothers me about this is the tip doesn't feel wet, if that makes sense. The tip feels dry always, unless it's like brand spanking new and then it's like really, really wet. But once you've been using it for a while, the tip always feels dry. So when I go to use it, I'm like, oh, is anything coming out? And then like, okay, yeah, something's working. But I just don't love that feel. But it's a good liner. Now I'm going to do the No Budge Retractable Liner in black on my lower lash line. I have a hot take, probably unpopular opinion about mascaras. Here's my thing. Big Mood is horrible. <laughs> That's it. That's my hot take. I'm not apologizing for it. Um, this is their, and this is the blue one. So this is their Better Than Sex dupe the brush looks exactly like it there's a million other mascaras on the market that have already duped this the best thing they ever did was come out with it in a blue they also came out with it in a green um which was smart because nobody else has done that but it's a horrible mascara like i just hate it so they came out with it in a green and i immediately was obsessed but here's what i did I created a little Frankenstein baby, and this is my big mood in the shade Deep Green. But you see how this lit, this cap isn't the same color? <laughs> That's because this cap belongs to my Essence I Love Extreme Mascara. I took and I cleaned off the, the um, wands, and I swapped the wands because I love this color. And I actually really like this Essence Mascara, but I hated the wand. And this is an unfair comparison now because I can't use blue on this eye look. I mean, I guess I could. But this, this Frankenstein moment um, makes this so much better. This is a good bulk, okay? Big Mood, the formula, like the actual formula, the bulk is a good formula. The brush sucks. And I, yeah, I know, can't state that enough. But we're gonna use it today because I promised a full face of e.l.f. and it would not be fair if I did a full face of e.l.f. but I swapped out their brush. So fine. This is just such a huge wand to work with. So I imagine that if you have really big, really long lashes, this might be great for you. If you liked Better Than Sex, this might be great for you. Um, I worked, I remember when Better Than Sex, like, was all the rage. Was it 2016, 2015? It was like the only mascara anybody wanted to buy. And I worked at Sephora at the time, and I had to... I basically felt like I was lying about it every day because I'd be like, oh yeah, it's amazing, buy it. Uh, I hated it. It just didn't work for me. The waterproof version actually worked really well for me. Um, they made it, I feel like the brush didn't change, but for some reason having a different bulk formulation worked well with that brush for me. To give credit where it's due, I love this blue. This blue mascara is, almost makes up for putting it in a crappy formula or in a crappy brush. Cause this blue is everything. I love that you can tell that I'm wearing blue from even like across. I love I, I, I just, I love everything about this color. So this is the Better Than Sex, or I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the e.l.f. Big Mood. And the shade is deep, no, bold blue. Bold blue. So if you like a good a blue mascara, if you have longer lashes than I do, give it a shot. I don't sign off on it lightly. It's not my favorite, but that doesn't mean you won't like it. Here's the thing about makeup is there's something out there for absolutely everybody. And um, 
what I don't like means nothing. You might like everything I hate. So we're going to move into blush. And I have two e.l.f. blushes that I don't remember ever using. Ever. Ever. <laughs> I just had them. And here we go. So I'm going to dig in. And I'm using the small stipple brush from e.l.f. Because I, oh shit, that is. Okay, immediately in. And crumbly. Oh, this is going to be pigmented. Okay. Actually, that's really pretty. So I literally got two colors because I thought, oh, I don't know. Okay, yeah, it is pigmented. I did not shake that side off as well as I did the other side. This brush, not great for it. It's not as soft as I like it to be. Oh, that's a, oh, but that'll work. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna dig in with this. This is the uh, the Elf highlighting brush. That's what it's called. This came off of a holiday pack, probably, because I can tell because of the handle color. It's much softer, much better. That's a pretty blush. Okay, and then, just when I say that, then it's super easy to suddenly go eat, like, heavy-handed. I'm going to use my e.l.f. Kabuki. Just kind of, like, get some of that off there, and let's try. It's pretty. This has a lot. So these are the... This is called Always Spicy, and this one is Always Lucky. These are those primer-infused blushes. I'm going to go in. I've never, haven't even touched that. Okay. Let's go in with a little bit of that rosiness kind of on top. Let's see if I can. Oh. Okay, these have so much color payoff. I'm a little like, wow. I'm, so I go ham with my blush. This is a little, this is even a little much for me. Okay, so if you've never tried the primer infused blushes from e.l.f., uh, a small amount, like the tiniest amount to start, build it up because these have a lot of, they have a lot of pigment. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. It, I just be, wasn't prepared for it. Usually, like I said, typically, like you guys have seen me on this channel. I go ham in my blush. I dig in. I'm not afraid. But these are little, these are very, I'm not, I'm not hating it. I'm not going to lie. I just wasn't expecting that much payoff. So, okay. Primer infused shimmer blushes are definitely giving me, giving me some sort of vibe. I'm excited for it. So, uh, yeah, I can't believe I totally forgot about these. Elf now makes lip liners, and they are these guys. They're the Elf Love Triangle Lip Filler Liners. They're a twist up with that really cute triangle top. So you could use these to line on the pointy side, but you could also fill in your lips if you wanted to. So that's really cute. I'm gonna line these. I'm using the shade Deep Brown. They're actually really pretty soft so then that changes I want to use one of these guys so these are the seriously satin lipsticks from elf I have the color cocoa which is this really pretty like brick red which I'm obsessed and then I have the color what is this taffy and taffy is this gorgeous kind of like pinky nude-ish pinky so 
all this week I've actually been using Taffy by itself with no lip liner to kind of give me that washed out look on my lips and I that's not a look I normally go with but I was feeling like I didn't want to take time this week and with shades like pinks like that I have to line my lips um, otherwise it just it doesn't look right so what I was doing was putting it in the center of my lip and then using my finger to kind of just blend it out and give it that undone look and I loved it and this turned out to be a great formula for that well we're gonna try this brick red today cuz there's no color theory happening on my face today it is just every color under the sun considering I put blue mascara with this very fall looking color on my eyes Ooh, these okay these lipsticks don't get enough love I think I think it's like a six dollar lipstick maybe five they're ridiculously comfortable like just putting that on it's like okay that feels so good on the lips they taste like lipstick which bear with me okay it's like a weird thing but I feel like classic lipsticks have like a classic taste to them they don't it's not fruity it's not sweet it's not infused with anything weird it's just um the formulation like has this certain smell and a certain taste that like t reminds you this is a lipstick not a lip gloss not some little kid's toy this is just a delicious classic lipstick and these have that feel that smell and that taste and I love it it's almost it's almost like nostalgia you know um so I'm here for it I if you need some new lipsticks in your life and you want something really good quality highly recommend these seriously satin lipsticks I can't say enough good things about them and I don't think they get enough love hey guys real quick future ash here I am out and about running errands same day it's been um i don't know like six hours and i have had lunch and two cups of coffee and brushed my teeth can we take a moment to pay attention to the awesomeness of the seriously satin lipstick from elf because look at this i have not touched up since i did my makeup this morning and literally eaten two cups of coffee I'm not kidding. Brushed my teeth. Brushed my teeth. And this is still what my lipstick looks like. Um, so, yeah, I'm sending out some kudos because I don't know another classic lipstick that stays on this well for, what, $5? So, yeah, I'm putting that out there. I hope you like this update. By the way, this is the rest of my makeup still looking pretty good. Um... That eyeliner, the no budge eyeliner, definitely budges. Um, look at this. It's cre I mean, most of my liners do this on the side. It creates like a little crease. So I usually have to clean that up midday. Um, the brows are standing up nicely. The foundation obviously looks really good. The blushes look really good. The eyeshadow is um, staying put. It's starting to crease just a little bit on this side, but that could just be the eyeliner actually creasing. Um, but yeah, I wanted to give you that update because the lipstick just prompted, um, and, uh, like butting into this video because hello, amazing. So that's all. Thank you. Back to your regularly scheduled program. So there we go. There's my full face of Elf. Oh, start to finish. Oh, I should use my setting spray. I'm almost done with it. Finally, this is the... Elf by Jen Atkin setting spray, which is really their coconut dewy spray. I love finishing my look with that refreshed look and then just letting it settle down. It feels amazing. So there's my full face of Elf, guys. I hope you liked it. Um, let me know what you think about some of these products and uh, what full face of would you like to see next? Because I'm totally down for playing that game. 
And, you know, I mean, if I have to go shop for something, I 100p will. Just FYI. So thank you guys oh so very much for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my Saturday. Um, just kicking it here at home. Um, probably going to do some, you know, cleaning and dishwashing. You know, some really exciting things. But, um... And probably get out there in Dallas for a little bit and see some things um, on this gorgeous day. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic one. And I will see you soon. Bye.